Welcome to Linux Classroom. Let's get started with this week's lab. The first thing you need to do is you need to download this help documentation. This can be found in the assignment canvas page. So download this document. This is not the lab itself, but this will be providing help with the lab. So go ahead and download and open it up. The purpose of this is the actual lab will be conducted on Jupyter Notebooks right here. However, some of the instructions aren't necessarily clear or need some more clarification. That's where this help document will help you out. This document also has where you will submit your screenshots and answer your questions. And this is the document that you will actually be submitting. It is recommended that you go through this document and read this first before you start the lab. There's some gotchas in that lab, things that need to be edited and changed. So please review this, read it, particularly here when you start going into part two and part three of your lab. There's some very specific things you need to do that's not really explained in the lab, but is explained here in the help document. So let's go ahead and get started with this lab. The first thing we need to do is we need to plug in your Raspberry Pi and log into your Jupyter Notebooks or the LP app that's running from your Raspberry Pi. You've done this in previous labs, so you should know how to be able to access this. If you're unsure, please go back and review those other labs. Once you're connected here, we're going to open up the actual lab by clicking on Connecting Things. Then we're going to go down to Control LEDs from the PL app dashboard and that brings me to this lab right here now this is a very complex picture and image that will show up you can ignore that we're not going to do it exactly that way but go ahead and read the scenario and the background of this basically what we're going to do and what this is describing is that we're going to create this setup here this circuit board and we're going to be able to control these two LEDs through a web browser. So we'll be able to turn off one of the lights, we'll be able to dim or brighten one of the lights, we'll be basically be able to remote control these LEDs from a website. The first thing we need to do is we need to wire up our Raspberry Pi and Arduino board in this fashion. As you see we have the green here which is our Raspberry Pi and we have a USB cable connecting to our Arduino board. And from our Arduino board, we have a few wires connecting from these pins onto the breadboard. We have two resistors and we have two LEDs that are here. So let's go to the overhead cam and take a look. So I've already wired everything here. Here's my Raspberry Pi. I already have it turned on because I had to access the Jupyter Notebooks. Then I have the blue USB cable and I plug that into my USB port here on my Raspberry Pi and that is connected here to my, my Arduino board. This powers the Arduino board through the Raspberry Pi but what it also does is it will transfer code that we run from Jupyter Notes on our Raspberry Pi and copy that code to our Arduino board. The next thing we need to do to wire this is we need to wire our LED lights. Now in the instructions they tell you very specific grid as to where to put these LED lights in. You can follow those instructions on your lab. For instance it might tell you to put your LED light on 9C or something like that. And so you go to 9C just kind of like Battleship right there and you put it right there and right there. You don't necessarily have to do that. I feel that's a little cramped when you follow the specific instructions. The important thing is, is just remember to put your LEDs, I, I'm going to put them here more towards the center. Just remember which side is your short leg and which side is your long leg. In this video I'm putting the short leg to the left and the long leg on the right. Once you have your LEDs in there, you'll want to put your resistors in here. So you should have two resistors. The first leg should be in this negative row right here. So that's where the first one should go to. And then the second leg should go anywhere out in that same row, going this way. So one leg is in the negative on this blue part on your breadboard. That's hard to see with these small wiring. So I have it right here on the negative. 
and then I just have it somewhere here but it, remember it needs to be on the same row and then same thing with this we need to have that these need to be lined up with the short leg of the LED so this should be all on one row this resistor should be here in this negative and then this other leg of the resistor can be anywhere within this row as long as it's in the same row as the short leg of this first LED our next light which should have the same setup so we should have our resistor one leg is here in the negative and on the same row we have the other leg of the resistor and that should all be lined up with the short leg of this blue LED now you may have different colored LEDs does not matter what color LEDs they are the important thing is is the short leg is lined up with these resistors now once you have the LEDs in and these resistors lined up with the short leg of the LED we're now going to wire up our Arduino board we're going to put one cable in the ground we've done this before so put I'm putting my brown one here you may have different wires colors doesn't matter on the color right so make sure you put this on the ground and then just like the diagram this needs to go somewhere in this negative column right down here along the edge so it doesn't matter as long as it's in that very first column because these negatives are all connected together the next thing we need to do is we need to take our next two wires and we connect one to the number 11 pin and the other to the number 9 pin that we see there so in my case I have this purple one connected to the number 11 and this white one connected to the number 9 again it doesn't matter what color you have um, as long as they're connected to the right pin then what we're going to do is we're going to take this purple wire and we're going to put it in the same row as the long leg of the first LED so I'm going to put it right there and this is lined up with that long leg of the LED and it's going to be in the same row so this and the leg right there of the at that LED are connected in the same row and I'm going to do the same thing with this one it's going to be in the same row as the long leg of the blue LED and so this is what your wiring should look like it should look fairly similar to the drawing that's in the lab on how everything should be connected so verify that everything is connected and wired appropriately and we can go to the next step of the lab before moving on to step number two in the lab we need to go back to our handy dandy help documentation we're just before part two I'm going back to this help documentation and you see some code that's put here what we need to do is we need to load some code onto our Arduino board so that it will accurately have everything it needs to be able to interact with our Raspberry Pi so what we need to do is we need to copy this code that I provide for you and you just click copy and we go back to our website and what we do is we need to navigate back to our home page so once back on our home page here we need to click on new and then Python 3 which will open up a new Jupyter note where we can add this code so I'm gonna you can go ahead and click on that I've already opened one up and I've already flashed it and what you're going to do is you're gonna copy and paste that code right into this window once you've copied and pasted that code you can then click the play and it will run your Arduino board should light up a little bit this should be your output once it's done if everything worked correctly you should have a status of zero if you do not have a status of zero or see some other type of errors then go back and review your steps something is wrong with the way you've connected your Arduino board or the way in which you copied and pasted the code so once you have done that we can go to the next part of the lab so we can read part two it talks about interacting and what we need to do to load our widgets we're going to be using some widgets on a web page for instance we're going to be using a check mark to turn the light on and off notice when the check mark is checked it is marked true and that means our light will go on if it's checked off 
our status changes to false, which means the light will be turned off. Then we're going to have this slider, which is going to dim or brighten our LED. We're going to have a little slider. So if I go down this way, this is going to dim our LED light. And if I go up this way, this is going to brighten one of our other LED lights, or we can keep it here in the middle. So what we need to do to be able to test that, you probably don't see these until you've run it. I've already run through it. So you can go ahead and click play. It will run it as long as you don't get any errors. Everything should be great. You can make sure that the checkbox works and the slide works. Um, nothing's going to happen to your LED lights yet. So once you've done that, go down to part three. Now part three, we need to go back and look at some of our documentation again. This tells you how to flash the thing, which we've already done. And it gives us some more code. Now the thing is, we're going to have to edit some of this code, particularly this right here, which identifies the USB cable attached to the Arduino board. That's this right here. That's the USB connected to our Arduino board and to our Raspberry Pi. We need to identify it correctly here with the correct code. When you first open this up, it will say USB 0. Well, that's not accurate. So if you go to your help documentation, you will see that this is what your code originally looks like in the lab, but you need to change it to TTYACM0. So that's what it should look like. Then we can go back to our lab again. Once it's, it's run there correctly, we can go ahead and load this code now to our Arduino board by pushing the play. Let it run. It should still be running while it's green. Your, your Arduino board may light up a little bit as that code's being copied over. That's a good thing when that happens. The next thing we need to do now is we need to go down and actually run our official code. So I'm going to go ahead and there's nothing we need to change here with this. We can just go ahead and run this code by clicking the right, let it write. And what should happen now is your LED lights on your board should light up just like they are here on my Brett board right there. I have my blue and my red and it's all lit up. Isn't that fantastic? So what can we do with this now? Well, we can start playing with this LED and this slider and let's see what, how that affects our LED lights. So here we have in the upper left corner, we have our lab with our little buttons right here, like our checkbox and our slide here. And in the bottom right here, we have my LED lights, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first uncheck this box and see what happens. When I uncheck this box, the blue light goes off, the, the light on the on the right for me, right? It might be a different color for you. And if I check this box, the blue light goes on. So I can check, I can turn the light off and I can turn the light on, all running it through my app, right? This can be an app on your phone. This, But right now what we're doing is running this through a website. So I can turn off that blue light anytime I want just by clicking that light. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. We might be able to see this other light better. Now we can go down to the slider here on the web page and I can slide this down and that should dim, dim that red light. Do you see how dim that is now? Maybe it's hard to see. Uh, let me see if I can turn off some lights so we can see it a little bit better maybe. There we go. Maybe this is better. Yeah, and then I can slide it up and see how it gets brighter and then slide it down and see how it dims as I slide it over the left until it completely turns off. And then I can slide it back up. And now I have a dimming effect on my LED light that I'm all controlling through my app on my phone, if we did this from our phone, or from a website. Pretty neat. That is pretty much the lab, guys. Once you've been able to control these light bulbs uh, using this web page, you're done with the lab. You need to take a few screenshots and answer the questions. I hope you've had a great time. This has been a fun lab, and I hope you have a great day.